My wife and I were staying with her sister for the night. The kids had gone to her parents' house, and having been married with children, we had no friends. So, we were hanging with her sister. We're getting ready for bed and my wife and I were fighting over a single sink as we were brushing our teeth. The door to the hallway was open and I'm staring at myself in the mirror as I brush away. I then see my sister-in-law walk past me wearing a white skirt and pants, not three feet away from me mind you, and go down the hallway towards the living room and the kitchen. Now the layout of this house means that anyone and everyone needs to go down this hallway by the bathroom to move between the bedrooms and the kitchen and the living room. So knowing that my sister-in-law had travelled that way and being kind of a dick, I figured I could sneak up on her and scare the crap out of her. So I leave the bathroom and head on down towards the living room. No one is in the living room, so I head sneakily towards the kitchen knowing that this is the only room she could be in. I jump, yelling loudly out in the kitchen, and there's no one there. The only other place she could have gone is out into the garage, so knowing my yell would have either alerted her, I walk over to the garage and notice that the deadbolt is still engaged. I turn the lock open and close it again, pondering what the hell is going on. Just as I'm doing so, a hand touches my back and I nearly shit my pants. Turning around so violently, I nearly punch my wife in the face. She tells me that she's sorry that she scared me, and it only serves me right for locking her sister in the garage. She assumed that by locking and unlocking the deadbolt was me trying to lock her in. I tell her that her sister is not in the garage, but she doesn't believe me because I'm kind of a dick sometimes, so she opens the garage only to find it pitch black. She looks at me puzzled and says that she saw her walk past me and down the hallway in her white shirt and pants, and I tell her that's what I saw too. Both of us walk back to the kitchen. The hallway is completely dark except for some light coming out from under the door at the end of the hall. We start walking back slowly up the hallway and nearly shit ourselves as her sister opens the door wearing all black. Later that year at Christmas, my wife's parents hear our story and start laughing. They tell us about a dozen stories about the lady in a white dress that they've seen again and again and I have not stayed there since. Last night I was in my kitchen alone and just making myself something to eat around 3am or so when I could feel that there was something near or around me. Whilst pouring myself a drink I noticed some sort of dark shadow quickly disappear around the wall which had a little mirror cabinet in the corner so I can see right around that wall. And of course, there is nothing there. At this point, I can feel something tug at my shirt collar and the hair on my neck stands up on edge. So I quickly finish making what I have and get back to my room ASAP. I know for a fact that I am the only person awake as my sisters are asleep and my brother is out. Mum at work and dad asleep in his room. So any and all noises I heard outside my room were definitely not any of them. I've listened to a lot of stories on here and half the time I think that it might be just my mind playing tricks on me. But at this point I know that something is causing me to feel uneasy about the kitchen or at least being in that part of the house alone. So after a couple of minutes I went to put my plate away and basically received confirmation that there is something here. I have a weird paranoia about stuff so I will always check to make sure that the balcony door is closed and locked, that there is no excess stuff plugged into outlets, that the fan and lights in the living rooms are off, that the sink isn't on 
and that the stove dials are off and I turn them slightly just to check to make sure they're in position. Then last, I check to see that all the bolts on the lock and the main door are locked. Just before I went into my room with the plate, I did all five and then went to eat. Once I came out not long after, I felt the same feeling again and quickly washed my plate and glass, but then, what I saw confirmed it all. In the living room, we have this little cabinet with boxes in it that slide out for storage purposes. At the time, it was completely filled and there is no way anyone could have moved it without making a noise. And I need to just reiterate, no one has ever moved this since we put it on the exact spot where it sits. But as I walked back to my room, I turned around in horror and saw that it was sitting about a foot towards from the wall. Now had anyone moved it forward to grab something that may have fallen behind it, they would have obviously put it back right away because my mother would have flipped out. And to be honest, now that I think about it, you can't really drop anything behind the cabinet to begin with as the entire cabinet is squared off and everything would be contained inside. But as I moved it back, I looked around to see if anyone was awake. But no, I turn back and go through my five steps again. And the first thing I notice is that the balcony door is slightly open and that the latch is in the upward position, meaning that it's unlocked. I have never seen anyone in the house just leave it in that way and there's no way that the handle could have just moved itself upwards fighting gravity this confirmed that something is in the house i sweeped every single room and found no one so i was sure there was no intruder and i left no spot for them to hide this is only just the start as something even creepier happened to me the next morning I had decided to go check the post downstairs as I got ready. As I stepped outside, the light right above me started to flicker. I know that's cheesy as shit, but I still got that uneasy feeling, so I knew it might not just be the bulb that's about to go. Which by the way, would a bulb just go dimmer and then stop working rather than flicker? Hmm? Anyway. I always look around as I walk down the hall and I notice that the stairwell door was shut fully. The apartment in front of mine and all the others along the hallway were also shut fully. And I thought, now this is the perfect time to get a video of all of this. So I turned around and started to record. Then, well, you can hear for yourself. No wind in the hallway no doors that needed to be closed and on these floors you can't hear what's going on on the other floors these doors are pretty heavy so no gust of wind or anything would just slam them also it's 30 degrees and humid so no wind at all unless you're outside so after i got the post i started walking back down into the hallway from the elevator only to be met with this completely normal looking and everything. I had a song playing in my earphones that was only about three minutes long and it finished by the time I came back up with a post. I am seriously scared. So my cousin and I thought it would be a good idea to visit a ghost town that was located nearby. We had heard stories from other relatives saying that they saw a woman and a daughter in a dress standing or walking by the side of the road. Whenever they passed, their mobile phones would either die or completely lose signal. And one of my cousins said his car stopped working as soon as they passed them. So, seven of us got into a big van and went to the ghost town to see if the paranormal activity was true. We were just talking and laughing in the van making fun of people who did get scared of the town. 
and that they were probably just imagining things. None of us had ever been to the ghost town before and we didn't really know when we would reach it. As we crossed a bridge that led into the ghost town, the scenery completely changed. A huge fog appeared out of nowhere and covered the whole town and the bridge relatively quickly. At that point the laughter in the van died out and we were all dead quiet because we knew we had entered the ghost town area. We parked the van on a dirt road that was just a little outside of the ghost town entrance. We turned off the car and closed all the windows and just sat there looking into the dark empty houses. It felt as if the houses were full of ghosts, just looking at the van as if we'd invaded their space. The atmosphere was so tense that after five minutes of just sitting there in the dark, the driver of the van suddenly turns the car on and drives out of the town. We all wonder why he left so suddenly, and we ask him but he wouldn't answer. He parked in a nearby petrol station and his face was extremely pale. He finally started talking and said that he saw a small girl walking behind one of the houses coming towards the van and he was petrified. You could see him trembling. He ran inside the gas station and the cashier saw his pale face and surprisingly he asked the driver if we had just come back from the ghost town. We told the cashier that we just had and that the driver had supposedly seen a little girl. The cashier told us that he had passed by the town a few times and saw the same thing. He advised us that if we really wanted to experience something paranormal, we should wash the car down with those little window wash things that they have at the gas station. We thought this was a good idea so we went outside and washed the car all around. We washed the top of the car the sides, the doors and all the windows and all the mirrors. We washed the windows inside the car and we took paper towels to completely dry the car on the inside and the out. We then sat in the petrol station parking lot for a good 10 minutes, talking to see if we were brave enough to go back or if we were just going to go home. The driver was pretty shaken so someone else took over and we headed back to the ghost town. We went back onto the dirt road and travelled into the centre of the town this time. We sat in the van for 15 minutes, just looking out for signs of a girl or any signs of activity in the houses. I can't explain how tense the atmosphere was. There were seven of us, all aged 17 plus, in the van and we were reduced to holding hands. That is how scared we were. It was weird, but everyone was so scared that we couldn't help it. And after about 20 minutes in the centre of town, I had begun to see a figure in the distance. It seemed like the little girl everyone was talking about, but something was odd. It didn't look like she was walking. She was making these odd movements as if she was limping or something. I told everyone to look into the distance and everyone said they saw her also. We watched her for about three to five seconds. The figure looked like it was getting up and we realised that she had been crawling and was beginning to stand up. Right when she stood up, the figure dissolved into blackness and a loud bang hit the driver's side. The gravel beneath the van made sounds as if someone was crawling under the car and three very distinct thumping noises came from under the car. The thumping was directly below my feet and I could feel something hitting the car. Something also stepped on the back bumper of the van and a small thump could be heard hitting the back window. I made the decision that we should leave immediately and so we did. We got to the gas station, everyone got out the car and we all saw it. On the driver's side mirror was a fresh handprint. Remember, we had spent the last hour cleaning the whole car and when we get back with no one leaving there's a handprint. We were all freaked out. I made my way to the back of the car 
and there was a little footprint on the back bumper along with a set of handprints and fingers on the back of the window of the van. We took a paper towel and tried to smear or dry the handprints slash footprints slash fingerprints, but they just wouldn't come off the car. We sat at the gas station for about 30 minutes just freaking out and still the prints would not dry. When you touched the prints, they didn't feel wet or anything, but they looked as if they were wet. Everyone was scared to get out the back of the van, but we eventually did. We made sure not to drive the van directly to someone's house, because in our culture, something could have clung onto the van and tried to follow us home. So, we went to a nearby Walmart. We stayed in the store for about 45 minutes and came out. The prints were still on the van. We had to call someone to get us, and we left the van in the Walmart parking lot until the next day. The prints eventually disappeared, and we took the van back to my cousin's house. I am never going to a ghost town again. My wife and I had just gotten married and decided that we wanted to see Napa, drink wine, and just do married people things. Either way, my mum had offered to let us stay over on the drive down. Some backstory. My mum has lived in the house since I was in junior high. It's a townhouse, so you always hear people next door running up and down the stairs at all hours of the night. So in the middle of this night, I'm awoken to someone pounding up and down the stairs rather loudly. Just like always, I think. So I have to use the bathroom. I get up as quietly as I can to not wake my wife who tends to yell at me when I do and go upstairs to use the bathroom. When I open the door to the hallway, I notice that the pounding has stopped. I think thank God and proceed to use the bathroom. I close the door, lift the lid and pee. And as I'm doing this, I hear the stomping starting up again, even louder than before. It seems as if it's coming from right up the stairs and along the hallway. I hear the sink vanity, one of those cheaply made 1980 sets vibrating with each step. All of a sudden, I hear a step hit the floor. I figure the pounding had woken up my wife or mum, so midstream I call out, J Just a sec! Just a sec! Again, there's a hit at the door, and there's a muffled yell. I call out again, I'll, ju I'll just be a sec! I flush the toilet, and open the door to let my mum know that she can use the bathroom. This action only takes like, one or two seconds. Flush, reach, open. There's nothing. No sound, no person. Nothing. Not even the pounding. I go back to the guest room and lay down by my wife. And just as my head hits the pillow, there's a pounding up and down the stairs again. I fall asleep nervously as you can hear when someone goes up the stairs, so there really is no explanation other than someone next door. The next morning, I tell my mother that the crackhead neighbours kept me up last night, pounding up and down the stairs. She looks at me, very puzzled, and then informs me that no one has been living in the other unit. It was sold, and the last tenants moved out weeks ago. If I'd have known this yesterday, I'd have probably shat myself. One Halloween, my teacher thought it appropriate to tell us some stories about his paranormal experiences. One of these that really stuck with me was a story he was telling about a farm his family had always lived on, and something about his grandfather. Now here's the good part. He said that last year after class was over, and he had finished his tales, one of his students came up to him and asked how his grandfather died. He told her that it was kidney failure. The girl who asked looked at him and said that's what she had suspected. Then she starts asking about the grandfather's appearance. Did he wear overalls? Did he have really long grey hair and facial hair? And did he wear glasses? At this point, the teacher was a bit creeped out 
and asked why she wants to know. Her response was, because as you were telling the story about your grandpa, I saw him standing in the corner of the room and he wants you to call your grandma. Later that evening, he did call his grandma. She was fine and said that she was happy that grandpa was still watching over their grandson. But nonetheless, it was still an incredibly creepy experience. An ex of mine had a young son who had a tendency to sit up at night and talk to his imaginary friends. No biggie. Kids and their imagination, right? So one day the girlfriend and I order a pizza, set up a movie, and the kid gets washed for bed. In his bath, I asked him if he was ready to go to sleep, and he said it would be lonely. I asked him why, and he said that his friend had left. So we fast forward about 30 minutes later. I kill the lights in his bedroom and say goodnight. He turns to me with the biggest grin ever and says, he's here, he's back. That is when the doorbell rings and I about shit my pants. Turns out it was just the pizza guy. Hey guys, it's Mort here and thank you so much for listening. Wow. Looks like you made it to the end of the video. Nice one. And it's that time again. I need your help to pick the next video you'd like to watch. Both topics are suggestions from you guys, and I need you to pick which one of these you want more. Hide and seek stories or Walmart stories. The one with the most votes by the end of Friday will be the winner. So take your pick and represent a side. A thousand likes on this video would be greatly appreciated. And if we can hit it, it would really make my day. You guys are so awesome and I really wanna make sure that you're enjoying my content. So any tips or suggestions you have, just leave them in the comments too and I'll read them and try and address them. Something I would profoundly appreciate is if you could share this video and let me know what your thoughts of it are in the comment section below. Remember, you can also email me your own creepy experience to my email, which can be found in the description. But just remember to give me your consent. Otherwise, I can't use it. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter, because I love spamming all your news feeds. But anyway, for now, guys, I'm going to sign off. Stay awesome, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Here are some examples of it moving. I had a dream where the doll is on my bedroom floor, under a pile of birthday presents. The next morning when I wake up, it is now on the other side of the room, right beside my bed. And after this, I am mildly freaked out. None of my housemates will go into my room, as I know that they respect my personal space. After this event, I felt mildly freaked out, and my housemate agreed to take the gollywog into her room. I then go away to Devon for a camping trip and upon my return, 